Verbs has just made this amazing video kind of speech, kind of sort of um, giving kudos to Galloway for winning and kind of knocking the government and, all, and also mocking the government for all this extra police um, that they claim they need. But the thing is, he I've just noticed now that YouTube have added something. So when you're scrolling down the comments, this is the first time I've ever seen this. And I, I, I'm on YouTube every day, but I don't get to watch all the channels because there's just too many to watch. But I've been watching channels. Um, I just don't watch as many of it as I used to. Um, and they've got these comments from members now. Why do you need to be a member? Now it's like they're a member. Who even was a member of YouTube? YouTube was just something that you go on, you know, you go on the internet, like you go onto the website and press play and watch a video. But now there's all these members and non-members. The thing is that um, Vobes is right in the thick of this member business and Neil Oliver. And they, I still don't think that they have really understood what's going on. They're, they're waving and shouting and screaming to stop this government tyranny and corruption, yet they're kind of, at this as they're waving and shouting to everyone from the vehicle, they're heading straight into it with all this membership business, comments by members and non-members. Are, are, are we MPs now? It's almost like, oh, Galloway's just got elected. Well, you know, some of Mr. Vobes' me uh, members, they're all members, you see. Members, yes, proper members, you know. Um, this is the problem. I'm going to tag Colchester Council Watch um, in this as well. You know, I know that, you know, it's good to get money in. I don't have any money coming in now, you know. I, I'm, I've got loads of stickers that I want to sell for the channel, but I'm not too sure what to do with them because... You'd have thought Stop You Les would be into it, but they don't want to upset the police, even though there's a lot of police corruption that we're supposed to be sorting out. And business corruption, Robert F. Kennedy is taking on all these big corrupt businesses and Bankcop.biz is meant to be about corrupt money, crooked money. So, um, and, you know, maybe I should sort my website out better or whatever, and I could probably put some things on there. But I don't, it, it's kind of against what Bankcop.biz is about to take loads of money off people, you know. Um, and a lot of the ULES campaigns, people are just throwing money at those campaigns just for the sake of supporting them. They don't ask for anything in return. It's like, it would be nice if you got something in return. At least when you join the Monster Raven Looney Party, you get like a rosette and um, some stickers and a card and things, even though maybe, maybe we might think they're a waste of money. Maybe it's okay to have graphics online now, you know, like... Um, um, mint, you know, minted, um, minted images or whatever. But it, it's kind of nice for people to have something or whatever, or give someone something, um, even if it's like just you know, like promo stuff or stickers or whatever. Um, but I don't really want. To, I don't really want to take people's money off them. But to be honest, I think that my legal representations that I have been making to like judicial conduct investigation office for all manner of things from Assange to um, stop you les petitions committee being corrupted, various local councils, um, corruption in the councils, abusive process where I think that the councils are not actually functioning properly and where they're kind of like making up policies and operations that, are actually kind of a lie. And and when you examine the underlying legislation to what it means and the statute law that the legislation has got to be compatible with and not in conflict with, it is corrupted. Uh, and then just things that, you know, the Petitions Committee ministers aren't doing, that they, they're meant to be doing. And then there's the whole courts, you know, we've had this military declaration of military accountability um, that Tucker Carlson was talking about from the American military, you know, that's come about after all Assange business, you know, military corruption, taking rights away, abusing religious rights and so forth. So I suggested to the judiciary that, you know, maybe they should have a, a declaration of judicial accountability, you know. But I just don't like the way that YouTube and Facebook have been... You know, there's a lot of fallouts at the moment in local Facebook groups. 
particularly when they're trying to either save uh, green belt or save trees or this and that. There's a lot of the admin who aren't really very experienced in rights, don't understand rights, and the, the problem is these big platforms have been giving people a lot of power, but it's a lot of power that isn't supported by law. It's power that is only supported by platform policy, and a lot of these policies are illegal anyway, and what's happening is that a lot of these independent admins and moderators are kind of really, really abusing people's rights, and it, they're ending up acting sort of like whips, government whips, but like independent whips, but even when people haven't done anything wrong or even broken any rule, they give people the ability to write group rules, right? But on many instances, those group rules are not broken. And the law's not broken. And what you actually end up with is just people being fickle and whimsical out of just their own kind of... The thing with this like and dislike thing is people are starting to press it when they see things they don't like or just don't agree with. And even when it doesn't break a group rule, they've listed for people to follow official or the law. And what you end up with is a very, a very whimsical kind of life where it's almost like you could end, you know, like, do you know, can you remember if you kind of like, you know, lower class or middle class or even whatever class, there used to be this thing where, you know, the the working class used to kind of like um, call out the upper class. They used to condemn them or they used to complain that, you know, these posh people walked past with their noses up in the air and, you know, didn't even speak to them. I've never really had that much in life. I only remember one occasion, really, when I was in Edinburgh and there was this very, very posh, believe it or oh, sorry, Glasgow, not Edinburgh, it was Glasgow, in Glasgow, I went to this kind of meeting and we went to a bowling centre, but I had to go find somewhere to park. And I wasn't it wasn't like I was dressed scruffy or anything. But to be honest, Glasgow is meant to be a place that's meant to be known for being quite, you know, the, the, the rough or the, the, the strongest Scottish accent, you know. And But I was in Glasgow, the centre, and I parked on this place where I eventually found to park, put, put some money in a metre, and it was quite, it was a little bit like parliamenty sort of build. You know, it was a little bit, it wasn't parliament, obviously, because it's, it's Glasgow, but, you know, Glasgow's quite a, um, you know, it's quite a, 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 a it's, it's got, you know, Neil Oliver's talked about this. It's got quite, you know, um, magnificent buildings still in the centre of Glasgow, big, big buildings, you know. And there was this really, really posh woman, and she, you know, was, you know, extremely well-dressed and affluent. I don't know whether she could have been a barrister, she could have been a secretary, she could have been whatever. But, you know, I've never actually had this in London or anywhere else. And I've been all over the country most of my life. And I just simply asked her a question, you know, excuse me, you know, I was extremely polite. Um, and she just kind of like, she just, she just walked straight past me and she did not even, her eyes or nothing, did not even um, clock my existence at all. She just went phew, straight past like that. She like completely and absolutely ignored me as if there was no one even there. And, you know, from all the places I've been in London, around the country, I've been into, you know, buildings that have got gates and grounds and gardens and observatories and their own, you know, grounds, deer, you know, and I've been in, you know, some of the most, you know, rough uh, or poorest parts of Liverpool or, you know, Walsall or wherever you want when there's been very, very friendly people. But I'm that one time there, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if someone had paid her to be there because it was actually a part where we were going to celebrate um, something. I wouldn't have been surprised if, you know, um, Charles or someone had paid her to walk down the pavement and ignore me, you know. Um, so that that one time. But now that kind of attitude, you know, where people don't even acknowledge you or they just have absolute disregard because, you know, 
it, it usually is th this class divide. That that is like the the widest bridge of class divide you can get, and you know, you know. I mean, I wouldn't have said that, you know, I wouldn't have, you know, put myself in the, um, I try and, you know, I actually probably think that, you know, I'm kind of like mid-range, you know, in particularly with my education and interests and so forth, you know, although a lot of people have had a transitional upbringing, um, you know, in, in, in my era, the era that I've been in and with my school peers, a lot of people in... Um, the schools that I were in have had kind of like a transitional upbringing. Um, but I, it, it, people are getting like that now. And it's actually nothing to do with, it doesn't actually matter what class you are. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't even matter what your interests are. It is absolute, pure, unadulterated care, just absolute. Um, you're not regarded as human. This is like trans... People are regarded as uh, the machine, a device, the machine, you know. Um, and if they don't agree with you, there's no negotiating now because they don't have to negotiate. They don't have to cooperate. They can just push a button and you're gone, you know. And um, I think Extinction Rebellion are a little bit like that. They, they come on there and they're talking like, oh, yeah, you know, we really want to listen to people. We want to cooperate more. We want to, you know, learn how we can get on with each other and bring more movements together and, you know, how can we improve and all this. But when you actually speak to the members independently and individually, you know, they're always asking you to help them. But as soon as, you know, you ask for a hand, they, they, just, they just switch off. They're not interested. They couldn't care. Um, you, you know, it, 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 and I think that really we end up being used for, for their means and ends. And, and I don't like it. I mean, Chris Hedges condemned um, that. He said that groups needed to work together and cooperate um, in order to overcome these big parties and forces, even if you didn't necessarily agree with them, you know. And then there's the anonymous movement, which is going, uh -uh, we will never forgive, we will never forget, we will never forgive, we will never forget. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of sick of anonymous now. Um, because the whole point, you know, anonymous is, you know, hackers. But, you know, that guy was on George Galloway the other day who, you know, he he helped design some of the programmes that are meant to be using the security on the social media for MPs and for the royal family and for the military and so forth. He helped design all the programmes. You know, he wasn't anonymous. He said, his, his, you know, he said his name. Um and he, he's likely probably as proficient or, or more proficient than, than most of the uh, casual anonymous people, you know. So anonymous are only anonymous because they say we're anonymous and they've got this style. But, you know, there are plenty more people who aren't necessarily anonymous or not who who may be more expert or proficient than them in hacking anyway without even needing to be anonymous. So, you know, it, it, it all this, like, I'm kind of uh, getting a little bit sick of it because... It's starting to the the model for what this global elite really are doing to us through social media is very Mark Zuckerbergy. It's very Google. It's very googly. There's only Elon Musk who's kind of at least said, you know, he, he claimed that he's he's not going down that road. Um but, you know, so people are praising Elon Musk, although even all his tech ideas are, you know, kind of like merging man and machine. Um, he's claiming that he's pro-freedom of speech and, and he's not into blocking and all that. So, I mean, you can't knock Elon Musk um, as much as the others. But, I mean, it, it's got Mark Zuckerberg written all over it. And, and all this comments, members, members zone, who's members zone, you know, um, you remember, you know, Judge Galloway has just got elected into Parliament. Now he's a member of Parliament, an MP, you know. Um, do, do we need to get elected into YouTube? And like I said, it comes back to the money. The thing is that it's okay to have an income and get money in, but at what point are we becoming like these corporate entities it's all right getting funds and money in, but why, you know, get funds and money in when your people are, you're actually adopting this, these policies and this, um, 
philosophy of this blocking and banning and non-forgiveness. It's very, very anonymous -y. And I, I think that um, the whole philosophy of Anonymous seems to be match with the with YouTube and Facebook. Uh, it's not different. It's the same, you know, um, block and ban and, you know, whatever. It, it gets a little bit annoying. So, you know, to be honest, I haven't been keeping up with the Anonymous because I, I got a little bit bored of it when they started doing all the UFO bullshit. Um, but, you know, it... it the, I... What, you know, Vobes' programs are brilliant, but he, he he's kind of a sucker for this whole kind of like members and membership and inner circles and, and Neil Oliver is as well. Oh, come and be a member of my little community. Yes, no, no, Neil, but I'm watching your program now. I can hear you loud and clear. You know, why don't you just, you know, type a reply in the box, you know? I oh, know, but you need to join the inner circle. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, no, Neil, I don't need to join the inner circle. Um... You know, and what special content is everyone else enjoying that, you know, I need to be privy to? You know, I'm supposed to be saving the world here, but, you know, for nine ninety nine ninety five, you can save the world with Neil Oliver for this subscription fee and Vobes, you know. Um, it, it, it's all a bit too shame. It, it's, it's all like, you know... Um, you know, oh, you know, let's get these Tories and Labour out. You know, independence, freedom. If you join the inner circle, you can be free. If you become a member, you can be free. You know, for only sixty nine ninety nine ninety five. Or would you like the you know um, new washing machine? You know, you know. And now, you know, it's like almost like a TV game show, isn't it? And today's prizes, you could win. The new, you know, Gillette washing machine or the new 65-inch TV or how about a membership of Neil Oliver's Inner Circle or prize number seven, you know, lunch with Donald Trump, you know, dun, dun, dun. Uh, we, we need to be getting rid of this TV game show hypnotism, this conveyor belt of uh, material possessions. You know, Robert F. Kennedy's meant to be, you know, trying to get people more back to the family and the community and health and nurturing local areas rather than them being um, under the attack of corporate power, buying everything up in local areas and forcing transformation of local areas into kind of like, you know, some sort of drive-through industrial mechanism where everyone's got their own, you know... Um, rectangular perfection of you know um you know everyone squeakily washing their car in synchronicity or whatever um of perfection but you know i know that robert kennedy jr wants to provide houses for people but i i don't think his vision of um providing houses for people is paperboy um or you know i think that he's got some kind of sense of individualism you know nature and beauty in nature, not this kind of like um, home and away, neighbours, Brookside Close. You see, when I went to Australia, I mean, everyone, it, 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 you know, when I went to Australia, they've got everything, you know, it, it, all the beautiful parts of our towns and cities here, they've got with a balcony on because it's nice weather. So... All, everything, all of the nice buildings that they had over here, or they've got over here, they've got, the kind of like the similar in Australia, but they're the same with balconies on, because it's sunny, because you can sit outside, you know, and everyone's houses. I mean, all, uh, they've just got these like um, endless kind of like dream places, you know, it, it's these kind of like they've got every, you know the bungalows they've all got the driveway they've all got the garden with the lime trees and orange trees in the back i mean it's not massive but i mean compared to liverpool or walsall it is i mean it, it, the, the, what else do you want i mean they don't it, it, i don't think that you know it, it, i do the during the lockdown, they were saying that Australia was getting, you know, a security state and, you know, oh, it's, it's a police state and, you know, that everyone's um, evolved from convicts and there's still this sense of um, police state over them. I never noticed that when I was there. 
I thought it was very laid back and casual. They got like loads of alternative music on the radio. Um, it, I never even saw one police. I don't think I saw any police when I was in Australia. None. Um, you had to go to the drive through to get your beers. Um, you know, it, 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 I didn't find it. Um, well, obviously, I was just, you know, I, I wasn't um, doing anything wrong when I was in Australia. I, I didn't find anything wrong with it at all. Um, there's a lot of people on the internet who are saying that it's, you know, police state, but I only think they started saying that after the whole pandemic thing. Um, and now that Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, is saying that he, he wants Julian Assange to be released, you know? Um, I didn't even see anyone with guns at the airport either. I can remember when I went to America... One thing I noticed when we went to America is like, you know, they've got these, all these guns at the airport and all this security and arm, um, like just like all this, like, you know, just going on holiday and there's just like all these like um, armed people everywhere. Was not like that in Australia at all when we got to the airport at all. It was nothing like um, America. But now they're doing all this, you know, um, express security go on holiday with Express, you know, get through security with it, you know, super quick. Um, yet there's all this fighting going on in the Middle East and um, Ukraine and so forth. But anyway, it, I'm not into, I, you know, really, even, I, I was having a go at, you know, Jeff Bice Cars channel and I don't knock his channel because like, I like Jeff Bice Cars channel, but, you know, with all the merch and stuff like that, we, 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 it's true we need money coming in, but you know, there we, we. I think people need to reflect on: are are these platforms kind of like ushering us into that corporate mindset and policy control, consent, consent, submit, agree? You see, that's what you're doing in these Facebook groups. They get. I don't I have a group myself and I'm not in charge of one. I'm not an administrator because I don't really like telling people what to do. On my forums, there aren't any members because it's it's read only, right? You know, it's just for information purposes. So I don't have any arguments with anyone because, but you know, I'm not blocking anyone from reading it. You know, um, I don't say you can't look at the website. You can't read the information. Um, you know, Maybe Facebook should have a, a thing where, you know, they can't stop you from reading the posts, but, you know, if, if, if you fall out with them or annoy people or disrupt, then you can't comment. Um, but I, I thought they were I thought they were making it so a lot of the groups, you didn't have to join them to view them. Um, so I'm not quite sure. What's, I, I don't think that if, if it's a political group that's got information to the public and claims it's a community group, then how can it block you from reading information that is for the community? Because then it's like, you know, if it's for if it's in connection with the council and in connection with a local campaign or action or voting or something like that, that anything that would be on the notice board in the village, it, it I don't think it's lawful to stop you from reading it. So, you know... And I know that um, Zuckerberg's been doing a lot of illegal things. So, you know, I, I, you know, I don't think really if it's a, if the group is designated as a community group or anything of a political nature, I don't think that they should be able to stop you from viewing it and reading it, even if, you know, they, they, they stop you from commenting um, or whatever, um, you know, and then, you know, what harm is putting a, a, a smiley face or an angry face when, you know, you can put as many angry faces as you want. They provide the angry faces and you can click as many as you want without putting a comment. Now, if you never say anything, I mean, what are they going to do? Like, you know, ban you, for, you know, you put 16 thumbs up and 120 angry faces, so you're banned. I mean, at the point when they reduce what letters you can type and restrict it to only putting smiley faces... Uh, they're going to condemn you for pressing the angry face, but they provided the angry face and they gave the angry face. So if they created the angry face and let you press the button for the angry face, then how can you get banned from pressing angry face when they're providing it? It's almost kind of like some sort of monkey experiment, you know, when they're like, you know, see if we can get the monkey to stop, you know, eating a banana by putting an electric shock on it, you know. We'll give you the angry face button, but, you know... um, 
we're not going to let you press it. If you press it, you'll get an electric shock. You know, these are the amazing things that in the world of Mark Zuckerberg's world's leading psychology department, you know, getting monkeys to do handstands and circus tricks and, you know, turning a monkey so it grows a squid's head off it or whatever Zuckerberg's up to. I, I you know, if, you know, I would never take a billion dollars off anyone in the first place, but I know if I did have a billion dollars, I would wipe the floor with Zuckerberg's professional psychology team um, and, you know, they would be on the back of a circus wagon because I don't think that they are intelligent. I know they're not intelligent because the local council and the government aren't intelligent when they're meant to be following and complying the law in broad daylight in front of everyone blatantly. So, you know, I I, I don't think Zuckerberg 